everybody. Welcome to the Tech Raptor Podcast. I'm Robert Scarpinito, your features editor. And Rodden, editor in chief. Rutledge Doggett, site founder. Andrew Stretch, the Marvelous editor. Ah, Marvel less. I see. Um, and I'm here in Boston with one of our writers, Dan Rockwood. Hello. Uh, I am your staff writer and PAX Explorer for the weekend. So thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah. Boston. No. Bastard. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any you baked know, beans I... yet? <laughs> no, but I thought the that first was thing I did when I got here. <laughs> Bean no, town. I got some uh I got some cannoli. I got some cannolis from oh. the most Italian American grandma. <laughs> it was amazing. It was perfect. Oh. Um this week we're gonna talk about our experience so far in PAX East later in the show. Uh but first let's get into some news. Uh Hideo Kojima's up to some fucky shit again. <laughs> Other news, water's wet. That's why we love him. Uh, yes, yes. He's a, he's a big fan of time right now. Because uh, all over his Twitter feed, he's just uh, posting pictures of clocks in both analog and digital form. You, you know, he's a very uh, smart man, I think, is the best way to put it. I think this is him just recognizing just how fucking long some of his games can feel as you're playing them. As they just never mm. end. Oh, so he like stares at clocks all the time. Yeah, we go well, to get the experience of his games. Mm. It's pretty similar. Do you think he walked to all these clocks while trying to balance a lot of luggage on his back? No, I think he's rich and has people to do that for him. Mm. At what at what point are we just gonna learn that Kojima's experience in it, like sorry, not experience, Kojima's existence is just an ARG? I could like, be. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Maybe so Konami weird. Maybe Konami still owns him, and we're supposed to figure it out. Mm. Like for he tweeted out the first one on April nineteenth, and then since then, sometimes multiple times a day, Kojima has been tweeting photos of himself, or people have been tweeting photos of Kojima with clocks around him, the focus yeah. of him, uh, blurred out in the background. It's usually uh, the same clock with a green thing on it. I don't know what oh, is. is there any pattern to the times? Could it be counting down to something? Or is it just random? We have a... Uh, buff, they have buff, to buff. mean something, knowing Ko Kojima. Like, we have a there's nine, some hidden message here. 9.35am, mm. 9.56am, a 3.28pm, a, um, a 10.19, and a 5.34. Some of them are digital, some of them are analog. We don't know. Right. And he's and up I think to something. It's worth, it's worth noting, his most recent one was about 20 hours ago from the time we're recording. This is April 22, 3.51 p.m. Uh, the left half is around, like, 11.53. But then the right half is 6.0-something. Because it's, it's just the 6, and then the colon, and the 1, and there's no other number after that. And, that look, I learned how to tell time when I was 5. I don't know how to tell that time. Mm. You know, it seems like some of this is it's like in an office, but another one it almost looked like those um like sound stages that they use for like mocap actors like you know when they have like stuff they set up that represents the scene and they're they're in their mocap stuff acting out for the game. Looked mm -hmm. like one of those stages. Oh uh, yeah, it's kind of got there's one of them that kind of has like the scaffolding yeah. where you put lights and and specific cameras so it for like tracking some kind of scene, yeah, something like that. Well, there's even, like, director's chairs there. So, I haven't seen Norman Reedus in them yet. Yet. But, oh, it's just eventually. Like, he's always gonna... Some some weird random fucking celebrity is gonna show up in his photos somewhere. You're gonna you're gonna be able to translate it and, um... Like, translate it all somehow. Like, decode it. Ha unhash it. And it says something like, uh... Like, I am Blue Box. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh no Kidding, or maybe, of course. maybe if you run these images through like a certain filter like letters start appearing it's uh, you know kind of like an ARG right it's like the stuff that they used to do with uh, you know of course <laughs> I'm the one that remembers it's like the stuff that they used to do with those game pass announcement emails that you could like tilt mm. your screen and then like <sighs> In like faded lettering, it would be like, ah, yes, you know, this game. That might be coming. the most irritating way you've ever brought up Game Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's like this other thing. It's like, oh, everyone's gonna fucking hate me. Like, I'm bringing up Game Pass yeah. again. He'll outdo himself next week. We know that. I don't. I don't care. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 
I, you know, I only can hope that this is somehow related to whatever his next major project is. Maybe it's Time Stranding or something along those lines, where it's just a ridiculous concept about time. Is it's it, going to be something dumb. And we're going to look back on this, and it's going to slightly make sense, and then we're going to be like, wow, that was a lot of effort for telling us still nothing. We know nothing. Mm. Um, Because I think at the moment, there were all the rumors, there's still the buzzing rumors that PlayStation is about to, at any moment, announce that they're acquiring some company. Um, yeah, that's true. Ko Kojima has pretty blatantly been like, no, it's not us. But I think... Well, after he posted the <laughs> PlayStation Studios thing... An accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, aside from that, I think that the other, uh, the only other real um, um, thing that has come up related to Kojima's studios is that he's currently working with Xbox on something. Mm. Um, but Lord Spoken. knows what that is. Well, if you look at all the images he's posted on his own feed, there's a little green something behind the yeah. clock and it looks suspiciously like the xbox screen so if you connect all the dots oh, I'm pretty sure the kojima the first that just looks well, like not a, on the first one like a chip yeah. clip or something like holding onto the plastic the... right know. and it's all the same clock it's the same one yeah so he's moving this clock from location to location mm. taking these pictures it's it's like his pocket watch yeah you know, Maybe some it shrinks we know down taking... in size. It's portable. Maybe. We know they're taking the same day because he's wearing the same shirt in the reflections of these photos. Right. So. I don't know. This feels like you the dumbest me. fucking thing to be talking about right now. As soon as I <laughs> yeah, said here's that. the thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we could stare at this all day and try to figure out the ARG. What's going on? Or maybe it's nothing. Maybe he's just suddenly a fan of clocks. I mean, you know, he posts random shit all the time. He posts, like, albums and, like, movies. Maybe or he knows that people now. will do exactly what we're doing, and he's just like, let me fuck with them. Maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I hope so. It's a distinct possibility. Yeah. Who, yeah. Wouldn't you love to be someone that has the reputation of Kojima and just be like, you know what? I could post anything and someone's going to think it's some bullshit. And wouldn't you sometimes just do that? It's. I mean, that's what Sam does, right? Sam posts Ooh. bullshit and people suddenly think everything's about it. Yeah. Who's Sam? Yeah, I could see that. Um, Speaking of bullshit... Uh, do you guys want to talk about Marvel's Avengers? I would love to. What a great segue. Thank you for that, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was from, <laughs> from coming from our marvel list Avenger uh, uh, editor over here. Um, so there's there's two big points of news about Marvel's Avengers in the past week. Uh, for one, uh, Jane Foster will be coming to the game in a future update. Lady Thor, as some might know her. And Mighty also, Thor. Might, yes. And also, we are never getting updates again. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's going to be no more roadmaps going forward. I can only assume that we will still get Mighty Thor, but well, after as, as Mighty far as Thor, a roadmap, who knows? After Mighty Thor, then next on the block is meant to be She-Hulk to tie in with that TV show. And it's only um, coming to Xbox. Right? <laughs> yes. So, no, She-Hulk will come advantage. to... We'll come to PlayStation as well, but she'll have blue skin. <laughs> Got to keep the like branding lines issue. correct. Yeah, that one issue in the comic where she had blue skin, of course. Was it? What well, didn't like Hulk start out gray anyway? I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. but nowadays we only get the green Thor. Thor, the green, no, the green Thor, the green Hulk. Green Thor. Dude, that'd Black. be OP. Yeah, Hulk at, with Thor's powers. Fucking a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so weird. It's... How much better would Endgame have been if the the hammer flies and it's the Hulk grabs it instead of Captain America? <laughs> <laughs> and he does he... the little smile he did yeah. in the first Avengers movie. Everybody <laughs> would freak the fuck out then. And then what and the then hell? he dabs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I guess at that point it would be uh, it'd be smart Professor Thor. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Professor Hulk. Hulk. God damn it! <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh, Kingdom man. Hearts has uh, addled your brain. I don't know what you're talking about. I can quit any time I want. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you so can. This, I mean, this news is so weird because it's it's simultaneously confirming that they are still dedicated to this, that they're still pushing this, um, even though at least the Steam the Steam player count does not look great at the moment. There must be some real whales going on uh, for this mm. to still be like such a good, such an investment for them. Um. 
but yeah, it's it's so weird. It's like, yes, we're committed. Here's a new character. It's a tie-in. You know, there's already rumors of the next tie-in character. But also, we're going to stop telling you what we're going to be updating. <laughs> I think a lot of the time that was just because they would get into more discussions about why haven't things been completed on the roadmap yet. You know, that kind of... Uh, entitled gamer isn't the right term, but that idea of like, well, this thing's been on the list for months at this point. So why isn't it in the game? And it's like, well, it might be on the list, but it might be lower priority. So when other things come in, like needing to release a new character or finally getting Spider-Man into the game a year and a half after its release, um, you know, it's it makes sense where they're putting priorities. I think it's just, you know, a way to stop having those dumb conversations. Because at this point, this is going to blow up for, you know, the week and then people are just going to continue playing it who are playing it and continue not playing it those who are not. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, make, it really makes me wonder if this we're just seeing kind of the stuff that they've already had working bigger things. I've already, they've already been going on in the background like, oh, we might as well wrap this up. And they're still in the decision phase of whether to move forward anymore because the big problem with the game is the core gameplay loop fucking blows. Uh, mm. No matter what hero I add, that's still going to be the case. <laughs> um, so I really, I wonder how much longer it'll really see much going on with it well right. they've got to get they've got to get all of the character models ready to import into kingdom hearts that's right for kingdom hearts mm. 4 on unreal engine 5 so makes sense true yeah dude i, mean, I think it brings we up didn't this talk bigger... about that what if sora is like fighting fucking thanos and... <laughs> oh my god i feel like we did bring that up i don't know i mean we 100 brought like that up last week yeah where the portal opens up with all the people and then fucking Donald and Kirby jump out. <laughs> what if that's it? What if what if um the hammer like floats up in the air and like slides across the screen and it goes to Goofy? Oh or yeah. yeah. Oh god. <laughs> oh. I mean this the they think this story also kind of brings up the bigger question of like are roadmaps kind of viable, especially with you know, I think we've we've all seen in the past now two years, right? Like a lot of release dates are getting pushed back or delayed because COVID's impact on like development teams, right? And if release dates are getting delayed, I can only imagine that means roadmaps are getting like hard. It's getting harder and harder to keep up with. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna push out like this map at that month, right? Uh, well, there's yeah, well, also also don't give hard dates in it. They're just like, here's what our next set of projects are. Right. Yeah. Right. I think yeah, I think like more like general or something like that. More general roadmaps are a positive thing. I think when uh, there's a reticence from developers to have roadmaps because of toxicity towards, well, why isn't this out or why haven't you done mm -hmm. this or you missed this date, yeah. that kind of stuff. Like, so I can understand not having, you know, well, Q3 we're planning on releasing this instead of, and just do kind of like a here's the next step, here's the next step, here's the next step. Um, but I can also see why a lot of developers would want to pull back from having roadmaps, period, just because of, you know, at times if you miss that launch date or that release date, then the yeah. amount of vitriol that can be thrown your way is just it's, insane. Yeah, a lot of people see those roadmaps the same way that they'll see a release date. It'll be like, well, you've said it's going to release on this day, so it should release on this day. They don't right. just realize that the concept of that roadmap is always in flux um mm -hmm. it doesn't quite help that the last two games i can think of that like removed or reworked a roadmap are um cyberpunk and star citizen <laughs> right but those are also two games that you know they knew that a, a lot of work needed to get done and they need to dedicate the time to getting it done um you know Comments aside, that I still think that uh, Star Citizen is a scam. <laughs> well, they're working hard at stealing your money. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Do you want to buy like, another thousand dollar spaceship? You can play mm -hmm. the game. You can play something. That's true. It's a, yeah, it's you a can, Star Citizen. You can play something. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's the that's tagline. <laughs> Walk Maybe around in a hangar. A, I mean, you don't think it's a good deal, but you can play something. Yeah, that's true. There's yeah, a lot more vaporware out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah delays in the game space especially are so much more prominent than it feels like in in other forms of media unless i guess you're george rr R. martin and just trying to get you know <laughs> books out um oh, that's never happening <laughs> no, no. yeah um 
so true story um you know everyone knows metroid prime 4 announced uh 2017 we're still waiting on it uh i pre-ordered it on amazon and i still have the pre-order in yeah. my cart uh it hasn't gone away it's been there for like three and a half years now oh, wow. so at some point that pre-order will be fulfilled oh yeah that'd be great yeah i mean i'm sure it'll, it'll show up on your doorstep any minute <laughs> yeah. like you could go home today and it'll be right there i'm pretty sure yeah so me, i'm so. a big fan and i know roadmaps are are different obviously but like if you're gonna announce a game i would really like to have that release date firmly in place with like here's the game you know here's what you're gonna play uh don't just show me a logo don't pull a metroid prime 4 because then you know here we are five years later and uh still waiting for it mm -hmm. yeah definitely is a game thing because you don't see like this movie's coming out like we've seen it more lately because of covid and stuff it's happened pretty frequently but usually it's only like here's a six month window or whatever um a lot of times you get that date and it's done but again the the movie movie industry is so much more like on top of it organization wise and plus i think it's a lot a lot more roadblocks to show up in a game because there's so many moving parts well yeah and i mean i feel like with movies too you know there's so much like there's post-production right mm -hmm. and usually the movie itself is like buttoned up and done like yeah. before it way before it comes out whereas here in the games industry i mean that's really not the case anywhere from indie to triple a right like there's yeah, always development changes. up to the last minute yeah. even after it goes gold and allegedly goes on the disc there's still going to be a day one patch and then not to mention a month one patch year one patch so on <laughs> right like yeah. you know and then that's not like and that's not to slag on any games like it's not just the the rough ones that get day one patches even like the the quote-unquote good Pretty ones much everything too does. right yeah exactly like i mean so here at pax right on thursday we talked to the the one man development team behind turbo overkill uh which is this like boomer shooter type game and it came out on early access on steam on friday so you could go out and buy it right now but that thursday we were talking to him and he's like yeah tonight i'm gonna go back to my hotel room and spend three hours squashing more bugs before I push out the early access build. <laughs> so it was literally like up to the last minute. Yeah. He's still working on it, you know? Yeah. It's just also, it's very funny to be bringing this up in a week where we've had another absolute vaporware game, Digimon Survive, announced 2017 with a predicted release date of 2019. Yeah, and we we'll, now know we'll that see. it's That's coming a few out months from now. In a few months. <laughs> yeah, it, it we'll might not see. survive. But then we've also had um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 move forward two months, which is just absolutely unprecedented. Yeah, Some yeah I mean, they did that through the, the power part. of the Monado. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it. Yeah, that's the series yeah. that has the god-awful accents in their voice acting, right? Yeah, they're very, Excuse very you. British accents. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess. It sucks. And then... What Splatoon's then got announced for September around the date, nine. yeah. That that um, the Xenoblade it's... would have been. So it sounds like Nintendo was just making sure that to to clean up that release window and and make sure that there wasn't too much competing. Right. I mean, they got to get their their queues all filled out, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Well, I think that does it for news i think i'll shift over let's to talking about, about PAX. such a quiet well, week well first let's let's hear about right you've been playing more hunt you're <sighs> one of the four people in the world playing hunt, <laughs> and you're angry about it well no i think this kind of ties into news a bit too so um hunts had some trouble in the last couple months i still it, it is probably one of my favorite games of all time just the aesthetic the uh, mechanics behind it are just incredibly well done um and it's it's a really solid multiplayer experience um but there's been a lot of like server issues lately um in terms of there's just some massive desync they've made some changes to address that that didn't really help for the most part like they reduced the sphere at which you could see things um but the desync's really frustrating because i can shoot someone and three seconds later still die from them even if mm. i i hit them first so there's this this uh this trade window essentially that's been opened up that you know I can hit the person well before they get a shot off and I still die, uh, um, which been, is see, they've been looking just, at Halo Infinite and being like we want to be more like them. Well, yeah, and it kind of ties into that, right? Like I get I get the f the difficulty with it, but at the same time they are exponentially driving up the amount of DLC that they're pushing. Um, mm -hmm. 
which I get it. You got to make money. But they did a dev stream last week talking about a lot of the changes. And, and one of the big changes, they did not really do much to address the, the desync issues or anything like that. Um, they did show off some of the new features, one of which is like a um, like weekly quest type thing. Which is cool and awesome and good. You know, you can complete quests to get guns, to get more um, money to purchase hunters and stuff like that. The problem is they some of those quests are going to be locked behind certain skins. So you have to get kills with certain oh gun skins. Um, mm. And when somebody was like, hey, we don't like this, the developer's like, well, you don't have to do that particular quest. And I'm like, that's <laughs> that's that's not the answer. Um, yeah, they're basically saying, know, I mean, you don't have to play our game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's like, I get that you guys want to make money and that people are buying the skins, but I think the priority right now needs to be fixing some of the core issues that the community is bringing up. And it's, it to me, this is a parallel to Halo, right? We've seen Halo die off very quickly because of the fact that we're, what, four months in and we still have terrible hit registration issues um, and some other stuff. And we're still pushing dlc we're still pushing highly expensive skins like i thought it's still not as bad as valorant skins but i think my frustration at this point is that there's there's more and more of a reliance on money and we go back to kind of the nft discussion right like you know let's focus on core gameplay and and that will that will bring communities in droves like counter-strike has had a very solid community because of the quality of the game and how impactful they were early on in making improvements. And as a result, people buy skins because, oh, this is a stable game I'm going to play for a long time. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm i very, fr that, that stream was kind of like eye-opening for them to be like, well, you don't have to do that part of the quest if you don't have that skin or you don't want to buy that skin. And it's like, that that's not the that's mentality. Weird response. Especially when yeah. most of the the comments on the subreddit and to Twitter are people sharing just egregious desync issues. And it's like, you've got to improve that. Maybe I get that it's easy for the art department to roll out new skins, but the optics around it are not good. Um, mm. And it, it's kind of a slap in the face, face of the community to be like, yeah, we know there's issues. Here's some more skins. Or you need yeah, to buy I skins mean to do this quest. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I don't think, like, more skins are a bad thing. It's just a matter of how you implement them, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like, when you implement them in this way, it just doesn't, like, it doesn't make anyone excited to want to use those skins. And if no one's excited about it, the fact that you would release more isn't going to yeah. make anyone feel better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the this isn't pay to win comment was kind of, no, it's not, but you're still tying something behind something you have to buy, whether it's pay to win or not. Um, right. Like, it shouldn't feel like an arcade machine. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're still playing almost every night, uh, still screaming about desync, but okay. it is still such a phenomenal game and experience when it comes to, you know, coordinating as a team and pinching other teams and stuff like that. That it, it's it's not too hard to look past the desync because it's not always egregious. It's probably every couple games, but uh, that dev stream was just kind of a slap in the face, I think, to the community. And so, I don't know. I I think they'll make it right at some point, but I think that if they don't fix the issues that exist now, similar to Halo, um, you're gonna we're gonna see a big bleed off pretty quick. So that and the sniper meta sucks. Agreed. Yeah. Very angry about that. I'll, I'll send this straight to Crytek. Yeah. 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 Bearded white dude mm -hmm. complains on podcast. More at eleven. More I mean, I'm curious it. too. Like, if if you're this angry about it, but you also say I'm still gonna keep playing it. Yeah, that was my favorite um, part. Yeah, I, just, I hate all this. <laughs> right. I still play yeah. it every night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, exactly. It's right. just yeah. It's it's one. It's a game that is so enjoyable when there aren't issues, and just incredibly frustrating when there are. Um, and it all depends on who you're going against because and, and servers servers are laggier than they have been. Like they seems to be getting worse week by week so we've kind of not been playing as much like we played anacrusis last night um we've been playing nightfall uh which i talked about on a previous pod but like i think it'll get to a point where we get frustrated enough that we walk away um you know we we did it with halo we've done it with rainbow six and and some others 
It's just you got to put your time kind of where you're not frustrated. It cuz at the end of the day, this is all for fun. Like there's no oh, yeah. reason to be pissy because of server desync issues when there's 75 games releasing every 10 minutes. <laughs> it's always funny hearing the games that you play because <laughs> they're starkly the different. That, well, they're, the they're different, but it's it's all like, hey, me and like 200 people in the world play this game. <laughs> no, no, like, no. I know the no. I know Hunt's a little more popular. I but I know gonna... I know yeah, Anna Cruz isn't, and I know no. that Nightfall isn't. <laughs> Seventeen thousand in game right now. Hey, there there are at least dozens of players on elex 2 right now come on oh don't True. make me pull this up so, i will nightfall has 568 and elex 2 okay. has 1162 so mm, yes impressive. okay that's a great install base <laughs> if you feel you need it you need to say it <laughs> okay i still don't feel uh, you wrong know. <laughs> Well, Rut, I can tell you this. There are at least 1,162 people in, in Boston, in the Boston Convention Center. Because yep. PAX mm. is... That's why the numbers PAX, are low. PAX is yeah. packed? Well, so Thursday it was not packed. Thursday mm -hmm. it was yeah, like you could spread. see the show floor pretty clearly. Like the literal floor. Yeah. Um, yeah, Friday, which is yesterday at the time of recording, that was pretty busy. Dan, you were on the show floor this morning. You said it was pretty crazy. Yes, yeah, so it is uh, quite literally packed today. Um, today is the only day of the convention that they sold out, so just okay. uh, droves and droves of people just um, everywhere, uh, which is great to see. And, you know, we are missing some of the, you know, really huge developers and publishers this year, but it gives people an opportunity to, uh, I think, spend more time with the games that are here, which is awesome. And uh, it's just cool, you know, I love, like, people watching at these events is great. You've got cosplayers, and you've got, um, you know, media people who are there, and uh, it's been really cool. So it's uh, it's definitely very busy today, lots of people out there today, um, and I'm just happy to see it. We've been two years without a PAX East, so it's, uh, mm. it's really nice to see, you know, civilization returning. Yeah, and in terms of like COVID stuff, I'm I'm like I see most people, if not everyone, wearing masks. Like I haven't, I've yet to run into anyone who is like aggressively like my freedoms and all that. <laughs> um, like even there was even like even the cosplayers wear masks in some ways. Mm -hmm. Some of them implement them very you know cleverly into their their um, cosplay. Others, I've just seen a dude in a skin tight Spider Man outfit with a really big and white N95 mask right over his mask, <laughs> which is just so funny to watch, but. You know, like whatever works, you know, that, right? At least you know he's masked. Tony Stark is normal. slacking on the suit tech. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of games, I mean, we, we've been playing a lot of uh, demos out on the floor, and there, there are quite a bit. Like, you know, the, the big, like, AAA devs aren't really here, right? Like, Sony, Xbox, Nintendo, or whatever. But there's quite a few, like, large indie publishing houses, like Tiny Build and Devolver here, mm -hmm. um, Thunderful. Dotty Moo, um, Coke Media is here. <laughs> yeah. Small, small unknown group. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the games they publish, though, you know, they don't really publish like the big AAA stuff. I don't think. Right? Coke Media doesn't do big stuff, no, but it's just, you know. Yeah. You know. But I don't know. I mean, Dan, you saw Shredder's Revenge, right? It was probably one of the big nostalgia blast from the past yes um this was a game that i was really looking forward to leading up to pax and uh having the chance to sit down and play it and talk with the dev team a little bit was really cool um the game plays great it's exactly what you would expect from a tmnt game um if you were a fan of some of those older titles on like the snes um, turtles in time was definitely a big um they took a lot of inspiration from that so it's uh, It plays great, and it does do both online and local co-op, so you can have two people couch co-op and then still meet up with friends online if you would like. Um, and I think it's just going to be a, a really good uh, a good game to you know check out and play, especially for TMNT fans. 
Um, the developer did tell me, uh, I guess April O'Neil was coded to be like one of the best um, characters in the game, which is pretty funny to me. Uh, so I did not get the chance to play as her. I was Leonardo. Um, but yeah, I played through two levels. And, now, remind uh, me, Leonardo's the turtle, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes, one of the uh, titular turtles uh, of, of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, if you like, you know, arcade beat-em-ups, if you're a fan of like Turtles in Time or those other games, definitely one to keep an eye out for and uh, was really fun to sit down and play. So I was happy I got to check that out. Mm. Digging all this is arcade resurgence going on and all yeah. of those like real classics coming back i wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing like metal gear coming back as well no not metal gear like metal slug that's we already, we already have well, they announced the thing. og metal gear yeah yeah they announced that just well just they've got the, the tactics game coming out yeah um, well are you talking if you want yeah another metal slug like proper yeah sure i wouldn't be surprised mm. if that if that tactics game does well enough we see more of that mm. right you know though speaking of arcade games um Another game I think worth looking out for is this. I played a little bit of this one called Arcade Paradise, um, which is like you run a laundromat. So you there's like it's it's first person simulator. Simulator. Your dad is voiced by Geralt, like yep. Doug Cockle is your dad, um, and you can do like the laundry. Yeah, you can do the laundry things. You know, put your clothes in the washer dryer and like do laundry for other people. But the back room is an arcade, and you maintain the arcade you have to clean out like the whatever there's too many quarters in the hopper you have to clean that out um and you're just trying to like get as many people in the door as possible and you can also play those arcade games and they're all based on like like they're all uh you know inspired by famous arcade games mm -hmm. from the past um so it's just really silly tongue-in-cheek but it has a really nice charm to it that i dig yeah, I think I remember seeing it. Uh, they announced, or this might not have been the first time it was shut up, but I remember them looking at it pretty long at that future game show last year, if, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Um, and it does look really neat. Like it's, uh, it's a pretty cool three D environment that looks like an old school arcade you're walking in. That I can tell. I mean, I haven't played it, but yeah, um, I imagine I mean, like the neon arcade everywhere. games stand up that you know people that are into the eighties will like it a lot yeah like i i didn't see an arcade game there where i was like that's the thing where you can play it forever mm -hmm. but i think that there's just enough where there's like the meta game going on on top of everything and just like the variety that's there you know i think there's there's a lot to dig into i can imagine how frustrating it will be you know you go up to play an arcade game and you just want to chill out and then a bully comes along and puts his quarter out in front of you and then you get you get <laughs> bullied off the game and then you can't play that mini game get, again for, you get swirly for the rest of the like, day oh. <laughs> you get swirly and have Man. a debuff where you're not as good at the games anymore <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit yeah you do have to clean out the toilet in the place too so nice perfect maybe maybe you can get swirly i would hope not um, if you're the owner <laughs> <laughs> some kid bullying you <laughs> it's just like a the yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh dan you saw chernobyl right i did so this uh the you know the game released last year and so here they're showcasing their next gen updates which just went live the other day as well as some of the dlc that's coming up so i had the chance to talk with one of the producers of the game and uh, play a little bit of the demo of their PS5 version. So I got to see uh, the haptics of the triggers with the guns in the game, um, which I'm a huge haptics fan in general. So that was really cool to see. Um, some of the audio design is, is really interesting, the way that like things will echo like through the forest or one of the new areas or like the big cooling towers around Chernobyl. Um, one of the more like weirder parts of this, uh, I tend to be a like pretty big like Chernobyl history nerd. Um, and so you know, talking to them, I asked, so yeah, have you guys gone out? Like, what kind of research have you done? She was telling me that they've you know have visited the site, the exclusion zone, multiple times. They've taken scans of the buildings. They've recorded the audio, and uh, at one point she was like, oh, I've got like videos of our time there. Do you want to see them? And I was like, yes, yes, I do. So she takes out her laptop and there's this eight minute video of them just walking around the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Uh, and it was awesome. It was uh, so, so cool to see that. 
And uh, yeah, the game itself was uh, was super fun, and um, I was really excited to check out you know those next gen upgrades. But just knowing the amount of like research and care that went into developing this environment, um, I just fell in love with that too because I love you know the the team how committed they are to bringing this world to life and this kind of bizarre like really weird you know horror game that they've put out. So it was a really cool chance to see that at PAX East this year. It's a phenomenal yeah. game too. I really enjoyed it. Well, I'm excited to play more of it. I haven't like gotten <laughs> much into it, but uh, but I'm definitely gonna be playing more. Mm. That's my barometer. If Rut likes it, I know that I there's no point in me to give it a try. <laughs> uh, wow, bro, that makes sense. It's, it's kind of unerring so far. It's worked out. I, you know, is has there been any game that you both liked? The Last Probably. of Us, or I like the Last Pac Man. I know Pac both of them constantly talking <laughs> about all good. of the uh, Nutaku games they play together. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> I, forget, I forget we have a strict no Nutaku talk I on this that pod, was so a they, private they, channel. we don't hear that. Rutledge, you lied to me. Other people can see that channel. I don't. <laughs> I, I think Stretch has admin access to Slack, so he's been snooping. Oh, mm. so it's not just your DMs. <laughs> Well, <laughs> whatever, it's out there now. <laughs> I can live with it. Fair. Um, another big highlight for me from the show floor, uh, Tiny Build had this game called Justice Sucks. Yes. Now, do, do any of you know about this I, game? I know what it is, so you can go ahead and tell yeah. that. I have, I have not. You, you started leading into it before the podcast, and then you said That's that I would learn. Idea. So I immediately stopped Google searching because I, I wanted to hear this firsthand. Yes. So tell me about and Justice Sucks. Okay. So you play as a Roomba. I love it. Possessed by a demon, I think. <laughs> and, and you go around and it's kind of like, um, it's isometric, but it's very like Metal Gear solid -y. It's very tactical espionage. I'm pretty sure it's in their, like, their slogan. It's like tactical espionage something or something along those lines. Um, so... From afar, you can hack like stoves or fans or things like that to distract people uh, or to hurt watchdogs. them. Watchdogs. Watchdogs. Yeah. yeah. Or... <laughs> yes, you can hack the drawbridge uh, okay. uh, in this. And as you distract enemies um, or hit them with stuff, you know, you, 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 bas you try to kill them. You're killing people as a demon Roomba. Um, you can suck up things and shoot it at people. And then once they're <laughs> dead, you can suck them up. And by suck, I mean like like you crush them. There's bone gnashing sounds oh, yes. as you as you bite into these people, mm. and like meat gets strewn around, and you have to eat that up too to fuel your blood Beautiful. arts, so you can do big moves. One of them is you summon your demon form and punch someone super fucking hard to kill them. And then after you finish the level, they give you like a timer to clean up because there's going to be blood everywhere, so you, you have to clean everything up. So it's very like so it, viscera cleanup detail. Yeah, so it it's like viscera mixed with what was that? What was that other game that just came out that like you've got to go out to crime scenes and like you're the cleaner, but then there'll be like police walking around and you need to like tidy up bodies and this and that. But like you're also always trying to stay hidden from uh from the other people at the crime scene. Oh, but for some reason one. it's a Roomba. Yes, for some reason it's a Roomba. That's, that's what exactly what this is. Reason? It's, works out I'm, perfectly. I'm all for weird indie games doing weird stuff. This is great. Yeah, it's one it's... of those where like someone's like, "Ha ha, that'd be funny," and then they're like, "But let's what if really? What if we? What did if we it? actually did it? Yeah. It's the, well, see, the goat the... simulator story." <laughs> Yes. I mean, that's what I like about this is that it start. I it starts out like when you first hear about it, you're thinking, "Oh, haha, ha, that seems very silly." But then when you actually play it, you're like, "Oh wait, there's actually like a a good video game here." You know, so it's like, Goat Simulator. Like, yeah, it's like it's not just silly. There's like I, I do want to play that thing fully, and I want to see yeah. the whole thing because like one of the levels is like burglars break into your family home, so you're like, well, I've got to protect, got to protect my family <laughs> by killing these burglars. So wait, is if that, that's the narrative? So like you're in your house as you're the family's Roomba. Where else are you going? Why are you going elsewhere? I mean. One of the levels I played, you were on a cruise ship taken over oh. by pirates. So and does they the were family just people... bring their Roomba with them everywhere? <laughs> I don't vacation, know. Better pack but... the Roomba. 
<laughs> well, so there are hostages around, right? So the part of the, the story or the part of the mission is like you have to grab those hostages and take them to the lifeboats to like get them to safety. And to by taking them there, you suck them up <laughs> and keep them in your, I guess, belly. So it's a Kirby and, game? <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it's a, you're playing as Kirby in this. And you, you bring them over to the, um, to the lifeboats. Oh, okay, so it's a heroic Roomba game. Yes. I kind of thought when you described it, I, th I pictured you just going around just torturing and maiming like innocent people. But it sounds like it's primarily criminals you are yeah. hunting down. Well, and you're still torturing and maiming, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. okay. I mean, it's, so long as they're bad people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the sucks. So the sucks in Justice sucks isn't that there is a character or the concept of justice sucks. It's that you are doing justice by inhaling things. Yes. That makes yeah, more it's sense a vacuum now. That sucks you are okay. embodying justice by sucking. Yes. <laughs> I feel like if we say suck like two more times, it's going to lose me. Yeah. <laughs> that would suck. I don't know. This is going to be like the point in history where people look at when the machines are uprised and it's going to be like this was the moment when they understood their full potential. Yes. Speaking as someone who always makes sure to says like please and thank you to my Alexa uh, because I want to be remembered as you know a kind human when they finally take over so hopefully they'll uh, they'll give me some mercy. But oh, no, that I remember game sounds him. We should amazing. give him a quick death. Oh, if we're supposed to be, <laughs> Just a quick be nice to our, our Googles, then, oh man, I'm in trouble. Oops. <laughs> Just... Yeah, the demon rubbers are going to get you first. Damn right. Mm -hmm. The office space is but... stuff pretty, pretty frequently. <laughs> yeah. But I did not get the chance to check out um, Justice Sucks. I When I head back down later today, I'll, I'll have to see if I can track that down and take a look at that. Um... Because that, yeah, that sounds like exactly up my alley of of just the kind of like silly, but also like really well done, well put together type of game that I would be really into. Yeah, good luck getting through Tiny Builds booth though. They they <laughs> built it like a carnival, yeah. which is not off brand for them. Because you know, Otten, remember you and I went to a uh, murder mystery party that was also unknowingly a reveal event. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that was that. We haven't talked about that before. We can talk about that real quick. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Fast. Where we walk yeah. in, where there's this tiny bell. We knew it was some event where they were going to reveal something, and it's streamed. You will see us on it. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Where we we go in, and it's at a bar, and there's you know you just hang out before the thing, and so we're just talking, and just random people are coming up to us. Like this weird dude is coming up telling us about his vineyard, and how things were going there, and then he just walked away, and we were both like, "What the fuck is up with that?" Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then this extremely <laughs> extremely drunk woman came up to us. And was like, where's, what's his name? Brian. Where I need to find Brian. We're like, we don't know who Brian is, lady. I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she also walks away, and that's when we start walking in. And then obviously the like presentation starts. We're like, oh, <laughs> those were actors. <laughs> and yes. we're sitting there thinking they're just fucking weird people. <laughs> It's, it's a good thing that their marketing strategy was so clear. I'm sure that they felt Oh, well, I'm I sure would look like fantastic. the email. It very clearly says murder mystery. I apparently just didn't read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's was, a user error. It was very clearly that this was what it was going to be. And it's then okay. the whole show was a murder mystery on stage. Mm -hmm. Tech Raptor wants the world to know that we have an editor-in-chief who can't apparently read. It's not so that I can't good. read. It's just that I, there's certain things I don't pay much attention to. Yeah, he was elected to lead, not read. <laughs> not, not that there are elections <laughs> this is not a four years you know term limit thing yeah actually i think i think nice. i'm i'm up to be <laughs> tech raptors founder next year <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how we just rotate it <laughs> yeah of my course. <laughs> yeah you're just um, saying that because you want to be nice to the machines and he's not human i don't know if it stretches a machine and, but he's definitely not human so is the requirement to be founder you're either a machine or you're a lizard person or you we like couldn't get likes. into that. Okay, no less dose. Lizard person? Robot lizard man. Yeah. I think we're peeling back the curtain a little too much. We're revealing <laughs> yeah. our secrets. We're sh yeah. shedding the skin, if you will. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> yes. I'll have to get my formula back out where it proves Rutledge is, you know, a lizard person. <laughs> our, our one and only lizard person. Our resident yeah. one. He's, yeah, he's got that be one. more... It'll be more difficult to prove lizard person versus robot because you could just show him a picture of like an overpass with the grid and be like, okay, select the overpass or select the stop mm, sign. Right. Wouldn't be able to do it, but a lizard person probably could. We've got that one candid video of Rut eating an egg hole as well. 
That's pretty damning. <laughs> Excuse me? Is that the one after you sucked it through a hose, that one? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's got really weird. <laughs> um, to bring it back to PAX, um, I also want to talk about at least one more game. One that was pretty cool that I saw yesterday. This is a game called Power Chord. Um, the devs are billing it as a rock and roguelite. Ro- rock and roguey wogey, I guess there I should say. There we go. Say I was going to say, yeah. I don't know what that first like, one was. Yeah. What's the roguelite? Yeah, I, I feel like you could hear, like, I was going through the K and the T in my mouth, and I was like, no, let's just, let's just keep it <laughs> roguey wogey. Um, but it's it's Darkest Dungeon meets Slay the Spire meets, like, metal and 80s rock. Hmm. So you that form a like band. A yeah. I mean, it all works, though. Like, you form a band, right? Like, drummer, bassist, guitar, singer. And you just fight demons through, I, I'm going to guess hell, but I guess it wasn't quite clear, but that just seems like the rock and roll it's thing to do. Probably. Um, yeah. So, so you, you know, there's like that big over map that looks straight up like Slay the Spire, you know, where there's like branching paths, you choose where to go, etc. cetera. Um, and the combat looks similar to Darkest Dungeon where it's like your party's on the left and the enemies are on the right. Um, but instead of like choosing like what your characters do based on their abilities they all have cards so it plays like slay the spire in that okay. you know it's, it's about managing your mana and etc cetera, etc cetera. um and it, it also has a really good charm to it it's very you know like the things are all rock and roll like when someone puts up a shield it's a symbol like it's a giant like you know yeah. drummer symbol thing um and like the vocalist is a support which makes a lot of sense um but it just you know it's it's fun and it's very much in that lane of like if if all of those check the box for you i think it's executed in a good enough way where you know i i think you'll have a lot of fun with it and the demo's out right now on steam if you're curious to like check it out yourself there you go it does sound pretty neat yeah. and i'm looking at it it's made by the same the uh, foregone people the people that made yes. foregone yeah. mm-hmm. big blue bubble, totally not right? the dead cells game yes yeah <laughs> Yeah, now this is the totally not Darkest Dungeon game. Kind well, of. if it's not, like, overly punishing, then it's already a win, because it, I get that that's why people like Darkest Dungeon, but it's some bullshit in that game. Yeah, Darkest Dungeon gets pretty hard. I think this one's a little bit more forgiving. Like, there's definitely still challenge involved, but I didn't feel like, man. oh, man, I'm going to die any second, you know? It does have a lot of style. looks pretty neat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks like a good roguey wogey if I've seen one. Yes. We need to get that on Steam as a as a tag, as a genre. Oh god! I mean, maybe we can create like in our uh, curator. Like, can we create categories in our curator? Well, we can make our no, own lists. No, yeah, not custom. Well, we can't. Well, make yeah, that, we can make we a roguey list. list. Yeah, there you go. Good, just good. just tech, rename tech Raptors roguey wogies. No, just rename the the roguelite tag, and then we don't even need to put in any work. Everything oh, will just automatically get shifted. We could do that. Yeah, I'll that shoot Valve true, an yeah. email right now. Like, you guys need to change Rogue Light right. and Rogue Light. Dear Mister Valve, combine them, make them Rogie Wogie. Yeah, mm-hmm. they'll definitely yeah. listen. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, everyone so. would, of course. Yeah, you well, definitely to, have to differentiate. You've got to listen to the lizard person. <laughs> to differentiate between Rogue Light and Rogue Rogue Light and Rogue Light. We can have like mm-hmm. Rogi Wogi, Rogi Wogier, and Rogi Wogi S. Oh, you're, you're not. That's like, the whole point of Rogi Wogi is that we don't give a shit about the distinction. Yeah. No, stretch. Your, your, your proposal to simplify a difference between two yeah. is to create a system of three. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Way worse. <laughs> Efficiency, synergy, buzzwords. That's right. Mm-hmm. Congrats! This is now a vertical This is now a devolver digital conversation. Yes. <laughs> um, Dan, did you have any anything else from PAX that you want to talk about? I've got the last thing I'll shout out here over at the Thunderful booth. Uh, there's a game called Curse to Golf that I demoed, and I love games that take a fairly standard concept and then make it super weird. Uh, and this game does that, where it is a like side-scrolling, kind of arcade-style golf game where you have your hit meter, you can adjust the angle of the hit, and you have to play golf. Uh, only your main character dies and is sent to golf purgatory, 
and the only way to break out is to successfully complete 18 holes of very difficult golf in golf purgatory and you have to do it all in one when you fail you go back to the beginning so there's that rogi wogi uh segment to it as well um it was super fun i did not get past the first level so i am not a pro golfer sadly um but it uh was a really interesting take on the the golf genre which feels strange to say but i feel like we've seen a number of golf games over the past few years uh and this game was was cool and um it adds uh like the narrative and the story of it was just like super you know funny and and kind of wonky too uh, so definitely one to keep an eye out is a uh, cursed to golf yeah how would you compare it to candy stand mini golf <laughs> i actually know exactly which yes. thing you're that's, talking about that's yeah the bar to which all <laughs> other golf games must be compared Okay. You're not wrong. Um, I think I I don't know if I said this to to Scrappy or if it's someone else, but it was um, it. I mean, this game kind of reminds me of that, so it's uh, it's up there. I mean, on the echelon Hell of yeah. golf games, it is comparable. There How does go. it compare to Ribbit King for the GameCube? <laughs> that one I'm sadly not familiar with. It's, it, you play uh, as adorable creatures who do golf, but instead of golf balls, you hit frogs. It's oh. amazing. I That's highly fantastic. recommend. Okay, I'm going to add that to my backlog list immediately. Um, and it looks like Cursed to Golf also has a Steam demo out right now. So, yeah, yeah, if that sounds interesting. It, it does look really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have sold two other things to say about the game that might convince you if you're not convinced yet. For one, the music is done by the same person who did A Short Hike, and it's like... It's like Castlevania meets uh, how did how did Liam the dev describe it? it was Castlevania yeah. meets like uh, Mario um, Golf I think yeah that was it yeah so the music is really good I'm a big fan of what I heard uh, and two the dev is based out in Japan and I saw at least one JoJo reference in there and I would not be surprised <laughs> to see more that's to entice people to play yes <laughs> okay I thought I thought JoJo was just memes. That's a thing? Yeah, exactly. Well, because there's, there's a card, there's an ability you can use called Time Stop, where uh, in the middle of, like, after you hit the ball, we we you can the, stop time. Oh, this is what Kojima was talking about. Yeah, okay, so it all goes back to Kojima, right? <laughs> but the, the description for Time Stop says, Dio? And, you know, yeah, if, okay. if, you, if you know, you know. Oh, well, you know, that also brings it back to, uh, you know, the uh, power cord, you know, Dio. Yeah. People don't know that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, the, at, in that game, I think the drummer is the one who's last in line at mm. the, the party. Mm -hmm. So here's a um, question. Uh, yeah. Riskiest food you've eaten this trip. Oh. Uh, in honor okay. of both Austin and <laughs> Sam at E3 um, well, poisoning themselves. Story. Why, yeah, well. Yeah. They both <laughs> ate food that got them sick, basically. So I don't know right. if it's... I will say and uh and and robert can definitely chime in i feel like you've sampled more of the the local food so far staying uh, in your hotel and everything and I've, I've just been going home every night um so <laughs> the convention food itself it's actually a grade above what you would normally expect mostly because they have food trucks parked right outside so i've been food trucking quite a bit um, and so I've had some chicken fingers and I had like a chicken and rice bowl. It's a lot of chicken this weekend. Um, and that has been pretty good inside the convention. I haven't really sampled anything yet, but they've got like a whoopie pie van you can go to, uh, and some other stuff. So it's actually been pretty decent. And so far my stomach, you know, doesn't feel like it wants to hate me. So yeah, that has cool. been good. I'll say that Sam's yeah, I... Reuben sandwich came from a food truck. <laughs> didn't austin did get like a, a shrimp roll order. or something that messed him up no no oh, God. Or I, I might be thinking of sam he he, we, we he took saw a that they were selling lobster out of a uh, out of a food truck and we're like we're like sam you have to eat this you know, <laughs> we have to God. test it the bullying yeah. is real and we never got around to it yeah and in terms of like for me i haven't really eaten that much at the con i only ate at the food trucks for one day it was like it, this korean food truck that was all right i mean coming from the west coast right it's like yeah. korean food is just kind of better there so yeah but nothing that's made me sick either well 
Shame. Is there anything all hit, you know when you get on your flight tomorrow for the six hours? Thank yeah. you for Perfect. that. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything going into this going into this last day of PAX? Is there anything that you guys are particularly looking forward to, or anything that you're like have seen on the floor that you've been like wanting to check out that you haven't had a chance to yet? Uh, well, I've got an appointment to see Evil West in 25 minutes. Uh, that I'm, I'm interested to see. Yeah, I heard from uh, Sam that he saw it like yesterday. He was a fan, so I'm curious to see what it's like. There was one thing that I actually saw it this morning. So Newegg is here, and they have this giant robot like costume. That's it's it's 110 pounds. There's like 3,000 LED lights, and uh, and I wanted to see it. Have not seen it. Finally saw it this morning. And I gotta say, like the costume is cool, but when they said giant robot, it's not as big as I was picturing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's maybe like eight, eight and a half feet tall. Um, but I thought it was gonna be like just you know sprawling above everybody else, and it did not feel like uh, like it had that you know giganticness to it. Well, I mean, be careful not feet. to be careful not to talk shit too much about the robot because I think yeah, it, if right. I was reading the the press release correctly, the guy who made it is the guy inside it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you <laughs> and also, I mean, have you said please or thank you to it? That's yet? right. Not yet. I haven't had the opportunity. A lot of people are taking pictures uh, with with uh, the robot, um, so I will definitely want to track them down later. To uh, we should you know... see whether he can do dinosaur costumes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Build build out yeah. a tech raptor for us. A Got to stay on brand. I've seen I've seen around too. There's a guy uh, carrying around a free shrugs uh, sign. That's been pretty <laughs> great. <laughs> pretty good. I I don't know that person's yeah. name, but shout out to them. I uh, did yeah. finally see that today, and yeah, I was like, "Can I get a free shrug?" And um, yeah, he shrugged. So yeah. I don't know what I expected, <laughs> but I got yeah, it. Got yeah. it. So Is that the COVID safe free hugs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's pretty that's good. good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that does it for this week's episode of the Tech Raptor Podcast, the PAX East edition. Uh, we hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free to leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening on, or if you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give us a subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know in the comments below, either on YouTube or on our site. I mean, what what of these PAX East games have you heard about so far that you're interested in? You know, is there any other indie game that you see coming up that you're excited about? Let us know in the comments below. Um, we are always publishing news, reviews, and features, etc. throughout the week on TechRaptor.net. But if you want more of us, we will be back next week on Monday. See you then. Yeah.